Christmas to you all! Starting a little bit late today, and that's for good reason. What a day we've had. Taking on Alexander. Well, we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Looking at the 9.2 news for World of Warcraft. And of course, I have been thrown down the gauntlet by the Wizards of the Coast to try and learn Magic the Gathering in four hours and then face off against an opponent, a professional chess player. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine with the guidance of this wonderful audience. I have no doubt we're going to be absolutely rosy on everything we're going to do. We're going to be the absolute pumpers. I lost my first game. That is the reality. <laughs> I lost my very first game. But, you know, life's a bitch. We do have our Quest shirts. I've taken it off and been wearing it all day because, obviously, it's a bit see-through on drama. But uh, they're awesome. Go and check them out in our store. They're so cool. Chris designed them. Vote Quest 2022, my friends. Vote Quest to get things going on. It's going to be good. Now... It's not why you're here today, though, because we've got drama time in front of us, all ready to rock and roll. Let's look at our notes from Bex here. Today, I've prepared for you, Mike, the dumpster fire of a guild, the case of DKP. Gnome Regan was uh, where things get real. <laughs> Hello? Okay. You tell them to be lovely boys. I'll tell them not to come Shining in. brights of my life. That would be awesome. That would be so good. <laughs> okay. Uh, the possession of her car and the dark side. Oh, I kind of like the sound of the dark side, don't you? Dark side sounds really fun. I like the idea of the dark side. Sure. I could deal with the dark side just for a few minutes. Sounds good to me. Oh my god, there's like 50 names in this. Oh my god. There is some roleplay in here, I'm noticing. Okay. Uh, be warned, it's about in-game stalking. Oh my god. Okay, uh, in-game stalking. Yikes. Yikes. Not the first time we've come across the old stalkers. Can I sniff your shoes? Mmm. Mmm. Abort. <laughs> guilty. Instantaneously guilty. I might not be able to fit every name into here, but I will do my absolute best to make this happen, because there's a lot. Nice. Mr. Gimpy. The wonderful Mr. Gimpy. Nasty. Woden's in this one. Oh, my God. I wonder who the stalker is. I wonder. Sully. Rockjinu. These wonderful supporters from our website who uh, keep this show running. Thank you very much. Fartles. Fartles. Brooksy. I am running out of room here. Brooksy. Stoof. Oh, we're on the edge. And there's two more to go. I might have to shrink it a little bit. I want everyone's name in here because, as I just said, they make the show work. So that makes sense. Delrud. Chris is going to freak out, though, because I'm going to make the box really small. Sorry, Chris. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to. Thank you very much for the gifted subs. Okay. The dark side of the moon. <laughs> I wonder who Bex chose as the stalker out of this motley crew of individuals. I wonder. Uh, we need a guild name, everybody. Somewhere friendly where nothing could ever go wrong. Probably the kindest, most wonderful free company or guild you can possibly imagine that would come together to form a joyous, joyous team. The Son of Man. Okay, Son of Man will do. For reference, that is the person who had just cr cracked my ass in Magic the Gathering. <coughs> Son of Man, we celebrate you. I have no doubt it was one of our viewers. <laughs> it was probably one of our viewers that just kicked my ass. I heavily debated whether I should tell this story. Yeah, in hindsight, it is one that needs to be told. As a cautionary tale, if nothing else. You see... While many of those listening may have attended a roleplay venue or two in their time playing FF14, what you may not have heard or seen yet is the dark side that exists therein. There is a solid reason why some people spend nearly all of their time playing in the roleplay community and not much else. And today, my friends, we are going to explore that. We open on myself, the author of this tale, Knights, and my fiance, the gorgeous, beautiful Woden. Fresh out of a dead guild that spent days convincing us to join their ranks, only to die weeks later. Needless to say, we were pretty miffed and desired to be more careful with who we joined up with. So like any responsible player in that position, we placed a search for a free company on the party finder. 
it didn't take long for us to snatch a bite. A guy by the name of Gimpy popped into my party and started talking to me about his free company. It sounded so, so great. As any FC sales pitch would. But there's just one little problem. His free company was on another server in the data center. <laughs> Whoopsie. Well, we got to talking out of this problem. And before we committed to making the jump and paying that cash money to move to another server, we wanted to hop on their Discord, meet people, get acquainted, see if our personalities matched up with theirs. Very wise. I like it. Gimpy agreed to this and passed us both a Discord invite to his free company, which he had named the Son of Man. While in there, Woden and I met Nasty, Rokjinu, and Fartles very quickly. All three of them were in a voice chat together with Gimpy. Rokjinu was super outgoing and showed the most joy at there being another girl in the group, while Nasty didn't seem to care. She was more focused on her in-game boyfriend, but at least made an effort to be a part of the conversation. Gimpy was very vocal and immediately took charge of the conversation, introducing us to everyone and complimenting us on hopping onto voice chat with them so quickly and not being shy. As I guess not a lot of people would do that. Bartles was conversational, but among everyone else was arguably the most withdrawn and spoke primarily to people he knew, Gimpy and Rockgino. I assumed he was just a bit shy. Uh, and the others that he spoke with were people he wanted to be familiar with. Overall, both of us really enjoyed our first interactions with them and in private expressed high hopes that perhaps we had found ourselves a good new home. We hopped into voice chats with these people pretty regularly from there. I myself would pop in comms and quickly be joined by Rock Gino. And after a few chats together, we found ourselves to have a lot in common. And the two of us became pretty fast friends. In the time I spent talking to them, Gimpy had said pretty frequently how much he hated any form of drama. To anyone who would listen to him tell it. He also shared how bad his self-image was and how low he was and his self-esteem was the worst. Something nasty, Rockgino and Fartles went to great lengths to try and give him some confidence. Gimpy wasn't a bad-looking guy IRL. The problem was he was short and in a phrase, not shredded. And he considered this to be a very big problem. I also come to find that Rock Gino and Fartles were IRL friends living in the same area. Gimpy knew Rock Gino, Nasty and Fartles IRL as well and had met up with them before in previous get-togethers despite him living much further south. <coughs> so the four of them were close-knit. Gimpy had an IRL boyfriend who helped with some logistics stuff in the Discord, but beyond that didn't interact with us much unless Gimpy kind of Gimpy prompted him to do so. Fartles had a bit of a crush on Gimpy. Gimpy enjoyed that Fartles had a crush on him and would occasionally hint that Woden might be crushing too based on some interactions. Woden hadn't really done much in the way of sexual exploration. <laughs> what does that mean? Virgin. <laughs> Is that the modern day virgin? I haven't done much in the way of sexual exploration. <laughs> But insisted that he hadn't... I would never flirt with Gimpy. Even though he confessed. I felt attracted to Gimpy. Gimpy bought a lot of glamour and barding stuff for Woden. Seemingly as a ward for his interest. Let's go forward several days then. And Rokjinu buys myself and Woden server transfers along with Krista in the event we want to transfer back later. We were incredibly grateful and offered to pay her back. But she dismissed it and said, don't worry about it, it's fine. The reason she did so, however, was because we had recently learned that Gimpy owned a medium house that he had set up as a venue. Both Woden and I agreed to work at the venue as role-playing security. Since neither of us had a very impressive array of dances for dancing, nor were we comfortable working as courtesans. <laughs> courtesans, that's what we call it. Gimpy needed new security, so Rokjinu felt the choice was obvious. But that night, we would be working as security. Or at least, I would be. Since Woden has IRL work and would be working later that night. Well, the first thing I had to do was get an outfit together, of course. And while I was working on that, I was introduced to some of the other staff and friends. 
Nasty introduced me to her in-game boyfriend, Sully. Sully immediately was over-friendly and gave me the creeps. But I thought maybe I was being too judgmental too quickly and tried to give him the benefit of the doubt that Sully was just a nice guy. But I've got to tell you, this guy was following me all over the housing area as I was putting together an outfit. So much so that even Nasty noticed and told me to leave me alone. Told him to leave me alone. Enough at least that Gimpy could help me figure out what piece I was missing to really make my security outfit crisp. Gimpy immediately grabbed the piece I was missing from the market board and gave it to me, and I looked the tits. That night, I was stationed to guard the upstairs area, which was an area for courts to entertain, or courtesans to entertain their paying clients. This is just a sex club. <laughs> this is just a sex club. Because the stairs were right beside the door, I saw a lot of those who came into the venue. One of the first to enter, however, was Sully. Nasty was dancing on a platform mere feet away from me when Sully approached me and sent me a, a message in the pink. The conversation went a little like this. <laughs> oh, you're working tonight. Yes, I'm working as security. So does that mean that you're on the menu? Winky face. No, it means I'm working security. Huh. Maybe next time. Sideways winky face. Have you ever been so creeped out and repulsed by someone you got goosebumps? I haven't, actually. I'm not short, but I'm also not shredded. Well, I did and sent the screenshot of his tails to Nasty, who immediately peeled him off me. But it wasn't the best beginning to my night. The only thing I could do was just pretend it didn't happen. I did get some decent pay for my trouble, though. Gimpy pe actually gave us good money to his non-commissioned staff. In this time, Gimpy race changed from male Makito to male here because he saw a handsome male here in a dungeon and thought that was the look for him. Bloodgore came to work at the venue as a go-between after having met Gimpy. Bloodgore was having some toxic relationship issues that the entire free company was helping with. Bloodgore's boyfriend resorted... <laughs> oh, she's called Bloodgore? Bloodgore's boyfriend resorted to stalking, harassment, gaslighting, and used the venue multiple times to trap and corner her into coming back to him, only to dump him again later. It got so bad to the point he had been banned from the venue so that Bloodgore had a safe place to be. Also in this time, someone by the name of Brooksy started showing up to our venue pretty regularly, and this guy was Moneybags. He tipped a lot of gill. One night, he rented Rock Gino and tipped her pretty high for her special services, and Rock Gino gave a glowing review of his skills in, in ERP when the two came back down from the upstairs area. How does this work? All right, don't pretend you haven't been involved in this. Some of you have. Do you buy time? Like, you get 15 minutes with someone to ERP with you in a club? Well, how does it work? I don't understand. Or is it until someone finishes? How does it work? <laughs> is he paying for time? It must be like 15 or 20 minutes or something like that. <clears throat> you either buy time or you keep paying. No, there's no video coming on this. I don't want to... I don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. I've been to a strip club... An actual strip club exactly once, and it was very uncomfortable. I did not enjoy it. I did not enjoy it. It got so bad that I was married at the time. It was somebody else's bachelor party. Uh, that the girls came and sat with me to have a break, uh, and they sat and chatted with me. And my, I was with my gay flatmate. So they just came and sat with us and just chit chatted because it looked like they were working, but they didn't have to talk to any creeps. <laughs> That was it. <laughs> that was my night in a strip club. Uh, he even paid me for my time on another night just to talk to him, which I found to be very sweet. He didn't ask me to do anything weird at all. This, however, made Gimpy feel very jealous, especially of Rock Genie, when she would talk about her time with our boy, Brooksy, until he realized his jealousy was the result of a crush he had on Brooksy. Gippy race changed from male here to elven male based on a poll he put in his discord. And the resounding results were, results were the Ellison male. Let's go fast forward a few weeks later. Gippy has gotten himself a big, big house. 
for the free company. He wants to use it for a new and upgraded special venue and have free company rooms that could be private courtesan rooms. Oh no, <laughs> this is a brothel. <laughs> That's what you're making. You're making a brothel. <laughs> Gimpy made a brief poll asking if everybody was okay with this. And everyone at the time, at the time is in caps lock for some reason, said they were fine with this. And Gimpy then closed the poll, satisfied with the answers he got. Gimpy then went on voca vacation at Rockjinu's house and went sort of MIA from the game for about a week. Only popping in once in a while on the PlayStation he brought with him to Rockjinu's house. Nasty raid changed to a Sun Miko and got, mon and got a lot more in-game boyfriends immediately after. <laughs> Thirsty bastards. To add to her harem... <clears throat> She even decided that she... Oh, my God. <laughs> Is this real? Oh, my God. It's totally real. She even got paid 20 million gil to become someone's pet for an hour. And also found herself a long-term sugar daddy. You guys are up to all kinds of shit. I mean, it's, it's all going down in FF. I see Sully in a lot of places I'm teleporting to. Don't ask me, man. <laughs> Don't ask me. <laughs> don't don't put this on me. I see Sully in a lot of places I'm teleporting to. Originally thinking it's just a really weird coincidence. Yet find out through Nasty that he's been using the player search to find out where I am in the world. He gets his ear chewed off by Nasty for creeping on me. Apparently he really desperately wanted me to roleplay with him and I'm not going to. Stoof started coming to the venue regularly to hang with Brooksy and talked about some very intimate things regarding Brooksy that really started to piss off Gimpy. Gimpy got so mad and had a verbal fight with Stoof. But Stoof didn't let it bother him and oddly enough, Stoof became friends with everyone at the venue, including Gimpy. Stoof even started to work the venue, helping out, decorating, listening whenever Gimpy had a lot of dramas to talk about in voice chat. Really kind of close-knit. But when Gimpy did eventually return from his vacation, Rock Genu and Gimpy would often talk a lot of shit about each other. Gimpy hated that Rock Genu was trying to seemingly push him into moving to her estate to live with her in game. Why? Because he had told her his IRL boyfriend was manipulative and controlling. So she was trying to save him from that circumstance. She also had friends he didn't like because they would use the R word when talking about things that were stupid. Nasty did what she was good at, which was agree with him, enable him, and then and then get him to keep going on with it. I should probably mention by now, this happened a lot. For someone who says frequently that he hates drama, it was kind of a big weirdness. Rogino was pissed that Gimpy hadn't left the poll up for longer, because she and Fartles didn't want the free company associated with this kind of venue. She was also pissed about how Gimpy didn't want to do anything besides lounge around in her place the entire time that he had visited her IRL. I was very confused about the amount of shit talking and I found myself in the middle of it all the time. I attempted to ask Gimpy about it. When he found out that Rock Genu had been talking smack about him, which I had to bring up, as he had been talking shit about her as well, I caused the whole thing to explode. The two fought and it ended badly. Rock Genu and Fartles left the free company, blocked Gimpy on every single piece of social media they had. Gimpy was furious. He spent the next month telling anyone who would listen about the betrayal of Rock Genu and Fartles, and how hypocritically they were in their desire to not affiliate with our bigger and better ventures for the entire free company. It got so bad that a lot of people present in the voice call, with the exception of Nasty, would tune it out every time he started bringing it up again. And considering how much he was hiring for his new super venue, it happened a lot. Among the new people who had joined for the super brothel was Delrud. Delrud was a pretty attractive male Ellison. He started as a courtesan, but wanted to become a dice master when Gimpy implemented gambling at the venue. You can have gambling? Gimpy often liked to use Dalrud to make Brooksy jealous, but Gimpy didn't, uh, did start to get some interest in Dalrud over time. While Dalrud did share some of that interest, Dalrud's gaze roamed to a particularly good ERP courtesan from another venue who had showed him some interest. Dalrud and this other courtesan went to the private rooms after hours, they emerged some time later without putting on their proper outfits, just wearing underwear. 
a detail that Gimpy noticed and became very upset. One of the dancers from our venue knew this other courtesan and knew she was actually scheduled to be married to one of her clients for a hundred million gil. <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> oh god fucking damn it man <laughs> the dirt on this she never told any of this to dalrod so gimpy hatched a very evil scheme he invited this other courtesan and her bow to be to our discord and made sure that dalrod the courtesan and her betrothed were all together he then gave the signal and everybody started spamming congratulations and tagging them both. Delrud was obviously very confused. And then it ex was explained to him that the love he had found was scheduled to be married. He was heartbroken. He disappeared from chat and the clubs for a while. Gibby took advantage of this and swooped in to patch up Delrud's broken heart. Delrud was ditched only when Gimpy found out Brooksy was performing with his band somewhere. And Delrud was always second to Brooksy in Gimpy's list of priorities. And everybody knew it. Delrud was just second fiddle. Just a toy to be played with. During the party with the band, Stoof decided this was a good opportunity to propose to Bloodgore. <laughs> she agreed. The date was scheduled and the invites to the super wedding had been sent out. I got out to venues a few times with Nasty and Brooksy, separately, of course. I came to really enjoy visiting all the different venues Final Fantasy XIV had to offer. I just didn't like the guys Nasty surrounded herself with, or her husband who treated her like crap. Woden became good friends with Delrud, and Delrud had been teasing Woden into changing back to a male Ellison, a race that he personally preferred. And Woden was, constant, was definitely considering swapping back. <laughs> There's a lot of names to keep up with here. Basically, everybody appears to be fucking each other. In-game. <laughs> and when they meet IRL, they sit and play PlayStation. Woden would ask to work in other positions besides security. He felt standing around all the time at these RP events would just get boring. But Gimpy would rebuff him and gave reasons why he should stay in security. His ERP wasn't good enough. And then he would always complain that somebody is... Poor quality as Woden would ask to change jobs. <laughs> At some point, Brooksy found out that Gimpy had a crush on him. And Gimpy would use many different people who liked him and had crushes on him to make Brooksy jealous, often without success. But for a single week, Gimpy took a break from leading the free company and let Nasty take over. Nasty had Sully help her out with leadership duties, and I made sure to stay far away from our creeper boy, Sully. Well, until the very last day. I asked Nasty if she wanted to go venue hopping again that night. And see what's going on. And agreed but warned me. That our creeper boy Sully wanted to come along. I groaned. But said I was okay with it. Because I wanted to spend time with her. Allow us to get closer as friends. So we went to a super pretty venue. And Sully immediately found a bunny girl. For us to do body shots of. <laughs> I wasn't keen on the idea. And expressed that I didn't want to do it. But since he'd already paid for it, I decided, all right then, why not? You're probably wondering how you do body shots in Final Fantasy XIV. I'm actually genuinely curious. I was thinking that. Well, let me explain it to you, Preach. Okay, here we go. <laughs> all right, here we go. How it works <laughs> is you basically role play doing the body shots. And I'm going to be hella judgy and ask what kind of adult uses words like tummy and leggies. When doing serious role play. That's where you draw the line? The grammar? That's where the line is drawn. Look, if we're going to do naked body shots, at least use some proper context. I mean, where's your vocabulary? Honestly. <laughs> That's where we draw the line. Tummy. Leggies. Yeah, you're ruining it for me. Sully used those words while trying to be sexy with his body shot turn. And it was cringe as fuck. It does sound cringe as fuck. Like someone not mentally matured despite their age. Sully tried to take that opportunity to push me into role playing with him. And I made it a point not to engage except for small acknowledgements of his presence. 
I got confirmation of that judgment when Sully once again returned to the pink. Oh, great. <clears throat> the conversation was a little something like this. How come you've been avoiding me? Do you not like me? No. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you want a lie or would you like the truth? The truth, of course. All right. No, no, I don't. Honestly, I'm here to hang out with my friend Nasty, not, not be with you. I see. Thank you for your honesty. But, can I ask why you don't like me? Are you asking why? Besides the creepy tells you've sent and the stalking? Or the blatantly over-the-top mushy and risque communications you only send to Nasty when you know I'll see them? Like in party chat or say chat? Because of all that was enough to make me really uncomfortable about how sleazy you are. I don't remember the exact wording Sully sent after that. But the summary is something like, sorry you feel that way. Not my fault. I did have a conversation with Nasty about this and told her what I thought a more responsible and reasonable apology would have been. Less than Rocky Gina, less than less than a few minutes later, I get that exact apology that I had typed out to Nasty in my DMs on Discord. <laughs> It wasn't exactly rocket science to figure out that Nasty had told Sully to tell me it. Genius. Absolute genius. I told Sully I was not in a good frame of mind to accept this apology at that point in time. His response was, that's fine. At least I tried. An hour later. An hour later. Gimpy shows up to resume control of the guild. And Sully tried to start problems by saying he was going to fuck off because people, some people... Some people in this free company hate me. Along with other things he said to try and drag my name through the mud. All because I wouldn't forgive him for being a giga creep. This of course resulted in a huge fight again. Not just between Sully and myself, but between Sully and Gimpy, Nasty and Woden, along with any other staff member who happens to be in earshot of this shout. In the arguments that ensued, Sully said he was happy to be a testament to why I had an issue with him. Then claimed that I only disliked him. When in reality, all this hatred was because I really wanted to be with him. I cannot express to you guys the shiver of disgust that ran up my spine that this was the mental gymnastics he had managed to pull off. So I told him, Sully, I don't dumpster dive, bitch. Then blocked him. <laughs> That's kind of a... <laughs> That's kind of a full-on RuPaul drag race attack. I don't dumpster dive. <laughs> That's full RuPaul, man. <laughs> Nasty, of course, spent a much longer time yelling at him, but despite everything he had done, all the evidence to her of his grossness, she never kicked him away. Literally days later, Woden gives in to Dalred's teasing and actually pays to race change to a more pleasing Ellison male for his eyes. He doesn't think himself good at making attractive male characters, so he asks me to make his character for him and reap the benefits. I made his character. We took some pictures to post on the Discord to show off his new one. And literal minutes later, I got a DM from Gimpy as he's going to work, asking me if Woden race changed. I confirmed, yeah. This started a huge fight. He's copied my face. The most beautiful face in Final Fantasy XIV, and he's copied it... <laughs> Despite his character having a beard and a different hairstyle, their faces did look kind of similar, but there aren't that many different faces in the fucking game. <laughs> he said, look, even his eye iris shade of gold is similar to mine. I told Gimpy that wanted it, uh, that Woden just wanted to be tall again, like Dalrod wanted, and that this was prompting him to be an Alison. Gimpy responded saying he should race change to a male Ura or a Ro to be tall, but to stay away from Ellison because that is his race in this setup. In the midst of this ridiculous argument, I messaged Nasty and asked, What do you what 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 should I do? What should I do? Her response was, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Followed by advising Woden race change back to his Miko to keep Gimpy happy if he wanted to stick around. He denied lookalikes being bound to happen due to there's not that many choices. He accused Woden of race changing to steal his attention from his clients and ignore his lack of trust being hurtful. He threw all the gifts he got us over the last few months in our faces 
how much he had given us, how much he had supported us. I said the only reason Woden was a problem was because he was in the same free company and was now basically his twin. At this, I asked myself, wait a minute, pop the brakes. Why am I even here anymore? I lost all my patience. I blocked them. <laughs> I blocked Nasty, who I thought was my friend, but fuck it, I can't be here anymore. I packed up all the stuff out of my free company room. I grabbed our chocobos and hightailed it the hell out of there. And I wish I could tell you, Mike, that this is where it ended. But fuck me, it didn't. <laughs> Delroy came to me in DM shortly after, asking why we left since he had become so close to Woden and I. Still angry, I screenshot the entire conversation with Gimpy regarding the ridiculous range ha race change situation, including parts with proof that Dalrud was the reason Woden race changed, and not to copy Gimpy, then sent them all to Dalrud for him to read. Dalrud was livid. He comforted me as I was lost to anger, and to sadness and to grief. He was a good friend, because those were my friends. Over the course of a couple of weeks, multiple people reached out asking why Woden and I had left. The both of us have become big staples within the venue's community, and some of them I shared with sc the screenies with. Others I forwarded them to Dalrud to avoid drama. Before long, though, the Son of Man had lost the majority of its staff indirectly. To combat this, Gimpy tried slandering my name to anyone who would listen, lying about how the arguments surrounding Ro uh, Woden's race change began. Rock Genia and Fartles eventually reached out to me, and we reconnected. I found out through them that Gimpy had been talking a lot of shit about me to anyone who had listened the very same day we dropped into the Discord server. Before the drama, before anything else, he was talking shit about us. Word of Gimpy talking shit about other venues eventually reached the ears of those venue owners. Gimpy became banned from the RP venue circles. In his last ditch effort to win me over, I was invited to the wedding of Stoof and Bloodgore. But word of my invitation reached Gimpy. And while I told Stephen Bloodgore that it was their day, I don't want to drag drama to your in-game wedding. Again, he told Bloodgore he was still emotionally vulnerable and dedicated to him from Gimpy's help with his ex. That if Stephen Bloodgore invited me to their wedding, he wasn't going to come. He tried to alpha them. But Bloodgore did rescind the invitation. Stoof was angry. I was upset and told Bloodgore that because of Gimpy's lingering control over him and using him to hurt me, I had to, I had to stop being friends. Brooksy stopped communicating with Gimpy after hearing about this, and last I heard, Stoof and Bloodgore broke ties with Gimpy as well. Gimpy still tries to talk to Brooksy, though Brooksy never responds to him. He's not blocked, he just doesn't reply. And Gimpy tried to re reach out again to Rock Gina and Fartles to downplay their fight and have them come back into his life and back into his RP circles without actually making an apology. Needless to say, they didn't. Son of Man has not opened its doors in months. Many believe that because of the sudden exodus of staff, Gimpy simply couldn't run a quality roleplay venue anymore. Woden and I are still together. Sully, Nasty, and Gimpy are all blocked on every single possible way I can block them. I still talk to Dalrud of Rock Gino and Fartles, Brooksy and Stoof. I can't pretend what happens still doesn't bother me. I get anxiety attacks when I spend time in a venue and keep my eyes open for anyone who might be them, even in disguise. But I don't want to let what happens stop me from having the best fun I have in FF14. You have a lot going on in these circles, man. A lot. A lot, a lot. Like, a lot. A, like, Jesus. Yeah, exactly. This is more drama than I've seen in any guild ever. <clears throat> that is a lot. Right, yeah, just leave. Like, but at least the rules remain the same, right? Just leave. For real. Just get out of there. Run for your goddamn life. Every single time. Just run. And be free. You don't need this in your life. At all. <laughs> so, oh, it's not Bex? Okay, like... I, <laughs> I was definitely, like... <laughs> I definitely thought it was that. Let's go to the dumpster fire of a guild. At high-end RP, it gets different. I can see that. I can very much see that at high-end, the RP is... 
very, very connected. Like, there's a lot of emotional investment in there. Well, considering we had a dumpster fire of a person, let's have a dumpster fire of a guild. Jesus. Yeah, like the roleplay stuff, it's still beyond me, for real. It's still beyond me, but it's so involved. And there's just so much personal investment thrown into it. It's like, it's pretty intense. Right, I need uh, two guild names, but one of them needs to be after a uh, angry GM. So we need two guild names, one after an angry GM uh, to go with this one. So let's go with this. Meanwhile, my guild has never been close to this stuff happening. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, this is fine. Oh, I like that, actually. This is fine. This is fine. Uh, Revenge of the Pre- No. Ian's Guild. Kevin. Mr. Angry GM. I don't think we should go with that. A short fuse. Alright, we'll go with this is fine and short- yeah, Okay, so we've got the good guild. This is fine. And then we've got the bad one. Short fuse. That sounds good. A dumpster fire of a guild. Greetings, preacher, and your chat, and whoever else is listening to this tale. I finally built up the courage to write this because I have to get it off my chest. The story starts in late Battle for Azeroth and ends in Shadowlands, so get ready for the red flags and how stupid I was not to see them. Alright, let's get a counter going. How many red flags do we find? You see, Preacher, I was a 14-year-old WoW player who had to lie and say he was 18. I had the classic, Mike doesn't work, just to be able to join raids. I hated it so much, so I decided during 8.3 to find a guild for Shadowlands, seeing as my current one died after killing Nazoth. And I found the perfect guild called This Is Fine. And the incredible guildmaster seized Coppermind. He was very kind in letting me join the guild, even though I told him straight up I am 14 years old. Oh, and Landra with the carry. The guild was new, and it was slowly being built up <laughs> to... <laughs> We <laughs> did. <laughs> you guys are good at this. I, I count three. Yeah, I'm at three. I'm at three. I'm at three mentally. I'm not. Does you know what I mean? We did one or two mythic plus dungeons together. Cool guy at first glance. Fast forward two months to the start of Shadowlands, and I started leveling hardcore. I had prepared consumables, flasks, food, gliders, all the huge. I had planned a route because I got access to the beta. I had fun playing my warlock and I got to level 60 very quickly and started the preparations for the first raid, Castle Nathria. I did dungeons on mythic difficulty with pugs because I was still afraid to group with guildies. But I still talked to guild chat and it was nice. If I remember correctly, one reset into Nathria or a little before I opened WoW, then I open the guild window, click on myself to change my note and add my new item level when I see that I have been promoted to officer. I literally fell down my chair. I'm not kidding. I was dumbfounded, but our man says copper mind came to clarify that he had given me the role due to me being in the guild since its inception and being a nice guy. And in his words... You are so nice that I've decided to make you in charge of HR if people have any issues. <laughs> I mean, that's red alert, right? You're putting the 14-year-old in charge of people with issues. Well, I was now a shy 14-year-old with power over lesser men. Power, which I will not lie, made me feel like a god. I was untouchable, seeing as I did good DPS, helped people and had good relationships with the other officers and the GM. I even spent my New Year's playing WoW with one officer named Acristo, a really cool guy, and of course, says Coppermind, our GM and raid leader. I also did PvP with Coppermind at the weekend. You may ask, well then, what was the problem? Where did it all go wrong? You see, Coppermind was a really really nice person i can't express to you how nice he was but in raids something changed he became this monster this jekyll and hyde persona he went full-on shouting at people for making mistakes and to whom did those people send messages sometimes to hr 
I started to grow frustrated, not at them, but at Coppermind. Screaming. Seeing as all he did was make people not want to play. We even had one guy leave at 3 a.m. to get away from this guild. How do we know this? Our control freak of a GM had an add-on installed to see when people would leave his guild. Oh my god. <laughs> I to this day remember a death knight whispering me saying he didn't like how he was treated. And I agreed with him. Because even if you did everything perfectly except for one maybe tiny mistake that we all make. It doesn't even ones that don't wipe the raid. You got screamed at. Some incredible quotes would be. I cannot be asked to wipe on this mechanic. Wake up! And after we kill the boss. See? This boss is easy! We had a big dysfunctional fa family enter our... Oh. We had a big dysfunctional family enter our lack of... A, 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 oh, I think there's just some... Uh, never mind. I can fix this. We had a big dysfunctional family. So enter our lack of a second tank. When Acrestor, God bless his purest soul, decided to help out tanking until we found a full-time one. You dumb bastard. You dumb bastard. Never walk into that trap. That is nothing but a trap. Of course, as you all probably know, that second tank, tank, tank never materialized. And I can guarantee you right now, Mike, that they stopped looking the moment a Christo decided he was to do it. Add to this yet another officer by the name of Kassir. He was a shadow priest and he was made to heal because of the lack of one healer one night for heroic Sun King salvation. Well, I should have seen that this was going to end horribly, but alas, I was blind. Thankfully, our abomination held together by a mixture of pure determination to kill Denathrius and some duct tape in the form of our actually competent players who were, now I see, definitely carrying us. Then came the moment when I knew this guild was going straight into the fucking garbage bin. After Kassir had healed one sunken salvation, he was told to stay healer. <laughs> As he was not bottom of the healing meter. <laughs> <clears throat> Kassir didn't want to heal anymore. Kassir hadn't signed up to be a healer. Kassir wanted to play Shadow. He said, look, I'm just going to leave. To which Coppermine told him, go ahead. I can replace a healer. <laughs> Kassir said, I am not a healer. <laughs> Go on, leave. I can find another healer. I'm not a healer. What are you doing? Bro, <laughs> you're not listening to me, man. I'm not a healer. For fuck's sake. <laughs> I was unable to type at the moment this conversation was happening because I had a big ass kebab <laughs> in my hands for the raid. I'm sorry. HR cannot take your call right now as they are eating a big ass kebab. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you though, it was really fun to read this going down. Yeah, I imagine most of you see this as totally reasonable. Like, this is a very normal thing that happens. <laughs> I actually found it really funny to read while I was eating my kebab. They really had an interesting dispute going on. I thought freedom had come to me. Jesus Christ had come down from the heavens to free me from this horrible abomination that was this guild. But nope, the issue fixed itself when we continued raiding. Kassir agreed to heal a bit longer if he found a replacement, considering it'd be so easy. Kassir, you fucking dickhead, man. I swear to God. Ah. <sighs> but that tension between Kassir and Say's Copper Mind was palpable. He got excluded from the Officer M Plus runs that were really. That were really Copper Mind and Acre, uh, Copper Mind, Acrister and me being carried along because of either my Warlock summon or they likely. It was just because I had my Warlock had summon. We continued to grind until we reached Denathrius. 120 right wipes later, we killed him. Is this on. This is on Mythic or Heroic? I, or Normal? I don't know what difficulty this is. Any guesses? 120 wipes feels like Heroic? I would guess. 120 wipes later, we killed him. 
at 9.15 p.m. I knew the end was in sight after we did some mythic progress. Okay, it was heroic. After we moved on to mythic progress and killed Huntsman. After that horrible experience, I hatched a plan of asking my mother to shout at me while recording recording it to use in case I wanted to leave. <laughs> Okay, this 14-year-old... <laughs> this 14-year-old made a recording of his mother shouting at him that he could play whenever he felt like leaving the raid. <laughs> so I could say my parents were mad at me and I wasn't allowed to play anymore. To add to my perfect plan, I knew that Coppermine was doing some illegal WoW activities. Coppermine. Like buying Russian boosting services to get PvP mog and possibly buying gold. You don't need to go to a website to buy gold anymore. You can buy yours at wow.com. Easy. So I decide this is the moment. I say a message in guild chat about how it was nice playing with them all and left the guild and discord. No need for ever using my recording. I continue to log on from time to time to check on my auction auction house on my alt while playing Factorio in my newfound wealth of spare time. Until I logged in one day on my warlock after a long time and instantly received a message in the pink. It was Coppermind. I don't know how long he waited for this, but he sent me the full message after like five seconds of being logged in. The message reads as follows. Hey dude, what's up? Why did you leave Discord, man? It's okay if you can't play, but please stay in the Discord. We're close friends. Um, I thought about it. And I answered that uh, my parents won't let me play WoW anymore. Which is a complete fucking lie. They didn't care. And he was like, all right, mate, understand. Want to do some Torghast then? I said, yes, because I mean, I was going to do Torghast anyway. So we did it all while telling me that I was being missed by the people in the guild. At that moment, I felt very uncomfortable. And I felt bad for Acrostor and the other people I abandoned them. I felt like I had done something bad. Like I had done something wrong. You poor bastard. You poor bastard. I now, of course, realize that it was manipulation. <laughs> So he invited me to join back just so I could hang around, be with my friends. I say, okay, okay, I'll join the guild again, but I can't raid. Mummy and daddy won't let me. No problem, man. We just want you to be a uh, part of the community in that. You know what I mean? When I joined back, people asked me why I was gone and I lie and tell them about my parents. They understand I log off to not look suspicious and continue to join sporadically from time to time to check on my auction house while still playing Factorio. Then Coppermine says, Hey mate, see you online. We're missing one spot in the raid. Why don't you just come while you can? Help out a little bit. You know what I mean? Just be like, just drop in. Of course I didn't refuse. Who refuses a free raid invite? I whisper Kasir, seeing as his role was healer still. Hey man, you're back to healing, I see. No answer. I then realize Kasir no longer has his officer role. I joined Discord. Everyone in Discord is really quiet now, except for Coppermind, who is barking his orders. Well, I guess you can imagine what happened that night. My whisper to Kasir apparently ignited a bomb inside him. That very same night, the one raid I had dropped in on to held out, Kasir led a coup and left with all our best players. Which then made me, due to the manipulation, feel betrayed. Not only because they left, but the only reason I had come back is apparently because they missed me and they didn't tell me that they were leaving. I did PvP with Kasir. He knew my age, he knew my he knew a secret only a few knew about, but nevertheless, the guild died. So some time passes and these guys create a brand new guild called Short Fuse. 
to jab at Copper Mind's attitude. <laughs> that actually worked out really well. Well done, chat. Well done, live audience. I laugh seeing the name and mind my own business. Copper Mind is way more silent than normal. I think that betrayal hit him. I receive a, wes a whisper from an officer of a different guild. It turns out more people were jumping ship together with Kassir's gang, and he asked why all these guys from our guild were coming to them. I tell him the true story in detail about what happened that raid night and all I knew. Suffice to say, they did not rec get rec all all the people who left did not get recruited to the new guild. That is a smart raid leader right there. Why are all these people from your guild applying to mine? Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Denied. <laughs> denied i like this raid leader what a good dude <clears throat> that is a good dude this was an attempt at revenge for not being told to come with them then out of the blue Acrista leaves copper mind at the time was totally silent all i knew was that he was being boosted ev boosted that day i talked with the other last officer about our situation our conversation was pretty normal and was not in any way influenced by him to leave I decided after I'm leaving with all my characters and just be done with this. I'd already give up once. I'm out of here. A smarter me now, though, a wiser me, blocked Copper Mind on Discord. Leave everything. Cancel my sub for a month. Uninstall so I'm not tempted to just log in and check things. I have never in my life felt better than at that moment. Oh, <laughs> don't worry. I'm going to lose your virginity one day. It's going to happen. The guild died not long after that, but I don't care anymore. All I regret was not being able to say goodbye properly to the guys that left because they were nice people, including the last officer remaining in the guild. I decided I would send a Christo an in-game letter before I did the uninstall. When I eventually did reinstall, though, I found out he had never replied to me. If it wouldn't have been for Coppermine's horrible attitude during raids, we would have been fine. The players were decent. Maybe we would have gone further. Maybe we would have still been around today. It's worthless look back on past decisions as the past is unchangeable. What do you think, Mike? Thank you for reading this. I hope you have a wonderful day, even as this doesn't end up on drama time. I don't need to tell you anything. These wonderful people here have been keeping a score. What was the final score on the red flags that should have let our author know? <laughs> it was never meant to be. What was our final score? Over 20, 30-ish lost count. I don't need to say anything. Gimpy got 13. I think, I think it was over 20. I think it was over 20 at least. There were definitely at least... But to be fair, there was at least 15 in the first 10 minutes of your description. At least 15. Let's have one more story because we did start late, didn't we? Let's uh, let's crack it out. Hakar Possession. Okay. Let's have some Hakar Possession. One more. All right. Lovely name. Thank you for supporting our, uh, our work. Brown Discharge. Thank you for allowing me to read that name in drama time. I appreciate it every single day of my life. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yes, I love it. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. This is unwinding on me. <laughs> okay. I submitted a story last year and I mentioned that I'd experienced some roleplay drama. And many people in your chat wanted to hear about genuine roleplay drama. I don't know, we've had quite a bit of it today. So I'll share what I recall with you. This would have been in Kirin Tor back in vanilla, on the Kirin Tor realm. The people there were nice, we had guild meetings in Brill. Really, Brill was actually a pretty popping place back then. Lots of higher levels hanging out there. And so a lot of roleplay happened there until the Burning Crusade crushed that dream. My husband and I were playing on our troll hunters. Not that it matters for this story, but he was a survival and I was Beastmaster. My girl's name was Yummy, and his dude's name was Brown Discharge. <laughs> so together you were Yummy Brown Discharge. You think you're funny, Bex? The combo of these two is Yummy Brown Discharge. You think you're funny, Bex? Should, so for context, Bex replaces all the names in your stories. When you send them into drama, we keep everything anonymous, and Bex goes through and replaces all the names in there. With our supporters. And today she came up with the couple known as Yummy Brown Discharge. <clears throat> <clears throat> <sighs> 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 
We role played as role played as being married, although we weren't at the time. As I recall, we were two of only three or four trolls in the guild. It was mostly populated with Forsaken, possibly because of how much they used Brill in the Undercity. Our first guild meeting was in the town hall-like building that was once in Brill. There was another troll there, and I, I no longer remember what class he was playing, and another guy too, called Hammerfall. Role players use mods that you've mentioned in Drama Time before to write descriptions and some backstory and some basic obvious information about their characters. As I tended to do, I clicked around and read people's stories. This included the other troll, who apparently, my character... <laughs> what? This included the other troll, who had written in his description that apparently, my character was unhappy in her marriage and was staring at him all the time. Smooth, dude. <laughs> so Hammerfall caught up with us at some point after the meeting. I don't recall what I was doing. Most likely trying to find a group for one of the nearby instances since I was in the area anyway. Still, I enjoyed role playing, so I went along with it. I remember Hammerfall insinuating that I must like him and that Brown Discharge hardly was paying enough attention to somebody as beautiful as me. Hmm. Mind you, outside of role-playing with the guild, we were mostly leveling, PvPing, or running dungeon. My husband was probably in Alterac Valley or in queue for it 90% of the time back then. I was nice to Hammerfall. That was my first mistake. We talked and RP'd while leveling, either in guild chat or, you know, in person, but in-game. That's not quite right, but it was as face-to-face -face as role-playing World of Warcraft could get. This went on for a couple of weeks, maybe a month. It really wasn't all that long. It was a fairly short stint, to be honest. I wasn't the fastest leveler back then. I was in college, working part-time, role-playing, and had social obligations. I'd also just stopped leveling for a couple of weeks when I discovered Arathi Basin. I still love that battleground. Had a night elf that let me kill him while he asked me to marry him repeatedly. Anyway, <laughs> I was somewhere past level 40 at that point. Not that it matters to this tale. I don't remember why, but we were RPing on some of the roads around Brill when he started acting strangely. As it turned out, he told me he was being possessed by Hakar. Oh no. Ah. <coughs> What's happening? I'm being possessed by Hakar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Abort. <laughs> Abort. <clears throat> it was really strange. Weirdly timed and odd, but seemed like, hey, maybe this could be an interesting story. Maybe. Of course, that would have been the case that he had, uh, had he not been a god modder. Anyway, Hammerfall roleplayed out the inner turmoil of fight he was having. And forgive me, as I don't recall the specifics of the conversation at the time, he grabbed his head, screamed, climbed out, no! Most likely every single cliche thing you would expect from someone pretending to be possessed. As you can probably imagine, the Soul Flayer eventually won, of course, and Hammerfall turned on me, and with a flash, cut my character's throat. Jesus Christ. Now usually if someone wants to attack your character in roleplay, there is some sort of discussion about what is and isn't allowed. I don't usually want to kill off my characters, though I have done it a couple of times. I don't recall him doing that, but this was so long ago that it may have slipped my mind. However, regardless of if he cleared it with me or not, I allowed it. Yummy would not have been expecting it. She, and she was close and she was trying to help him. It made sense that she would have been injured from this possession. I fell back in surprise and he towered over me. He was preparing to stab me in the heart. When by luck, another guild member happened across the scene. Hammerfall started to attack them but ended up just running away. My character was carried to the town hall in Brill and laid on one of the tables as they bandaged my throat. Oh, you survived the throat slit, eh? As the, members of the as the members around me tried to contact Brown Discharge. At some point before my husband could get to Brill, Hammerfall had returned. Apparently he had regained control of his true self and was begging for forgiveness. Brown Discharge was pissed. As he should have, should have been after hearing that his wife was hurt and seeing her laid out on a table with bloody bandages around her throat. Hammerfall left again at some point, though I think he was still around Brill. I explained what happened. Hammerfall was becoming a problem on multiple fronts, and I don't think he expected anyone would actually try and kill him. However, he had hurt me, and was now, in character, in-game, possessed by Hakar. <laughs> <coughs> 
So, as a guild and his friends, he had to be dealt with. And it was Brown Discharge who was leading the torch-wielding army. So he walked out of the town hall once he was sure I would be okay and challenged Hammerfall. This is where the ridiculous god modding came in. Again, he had conveniently become possessed by Hakar and was impervious now to any attacks, which even Hakar is not. <laughs> he said that Brown Discharge is now unable to dodge or block any of his attacks because he is the Soul Flayer. <laughs> how, many, how old is this guy? And you, I can't take any damage, and you're not, you, can, you, you, you can't avoid anything I do either. We're role playing. Hammerfall, <laughs> Hammerfall was making posts that determined not only that he had hit my husband, but also how my husband had reacted to it. It was the fucking worst RP I had ever seen. And my husband, IRL, was like, what is this? <laughs> he was genuinely starting to become annoyed. He was fine with a little bit of dramatic roleplay, fine. And with the possibly having to chain someone up until the Hakar possession could be purged with maybe the holy priests. He wasn't fine with this, though. This was shit. So, in the middle of this epic encounter, my husband just walked off and went to queue for Alterac Valley. <laughs> the RP, of course, quickly died off after that. We talked to the officers of the guild, and they did nothing. They said it was a small thing. We said, okay, we're leaving this guild then. We explained why, and they understood. They thanked us for helping bring a bit of drama and flair of a storyline to life and wished us well. Over the next couple of days, we got to talking, decided to put our money where we mouths were. If we're going to bitch about how other people run their guilds... Oh my god, you're starting a husband-wife guild because of a Hakar roleplay? Oh my god, it's just like... It's when the glass breaks, and it just all shatters, right? It's the, it's the domino effect. Every single time. If we're going to bitch about how other people run their guilds, then we should make our own. And so we did. The server, Horde, and Alliance knew that if they came to me with complaints, I would investigate them as best I could and deal with them. There was some minor drama in, in that guild. One of the members made inappropriate comments about myself and my husband when I was logging off. A super minor drama of a priest getting mad at me for replacing my buzzard, which had saved them many times in dungeons with a rare two-headed one from Outlands. in our, <laughs> But it was, overall, a decent guild. I just wanted to share this with you, Mike. About how god modding can ruin everything. And to let any of the prestigious or potential role players who might listen to your story not do that. It's not big, and it's not clever. I want to tell you another story, but not today, about how we allowed to rent a room from us meeting a... How we allowed to, how we were allowed to rent a room for are we allowed someone to rent a room from us after meeting a girl in WoW? And what happened afterwards? If you want to hear about what happened with her. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe. You role players and you god modding. Uh pretty serious stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings the end of drama to for today. They rented a room to somebody that they met in WoW. Mmm. Mmm. I would like to hear that story. Yeah, maybe. Every set of drama for today. <sighs> I don't think I'll be around over the weekend. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. But if you, if I am, I'll let you know. I do have access to Elden Ring. I'm not allowed to stream it, although apparently a lot of people are streaming it, even though they're technically not allowed, and some people are allowed, and it's all a little bit complicated uh but i might check it out i might not at least i can have some opinion on it although i'm pretty sure from what i've heard it's basically dark souls 4 which i'm really happy about uh oh god yeah i'm lying i am live tomorrow we have a housing competition <laughs> i am live tomorrow uh tomorrow night what time are we starting bex what time are we starting uh we are doing our final fantasy 14 housing competition 7 p.m tomorrow 7 p.m uk tomorrow we'll be giving away 100 pounds uh, to spend on the screen next door. My age is showing. Just busyness is showing. Uh, that's all. We always have something going on. Uh, so, see you then. 7pm tomorrow. Final Fantasy XIV housing competition. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I can stream it without getting in trouble. I just choose not to. Uh, I don't need to. We're going to be playing the full game anyway. And it's going to be massive. So we'll be playing it for a while. It's all G in my eyes. Have a wonderful, wonderful time. I hope to see you tomorrow at the housing competition. We will be visiting some of the... We've had hundreds of applications, I think, Bex. Uh, I know that the crew sat down and went through literally hundreds. 
uh, of houses to select what we're going to be looking at. So it should be really fun. It'll be me and Zeppler and Sake and Sake and Elandra. Uh, everybody will be together. I'm tired. It's been nine hours. So I'll see you then. Be good, guys. Bye-bye.